so good to be in Bristol and start the day like that, regardless of how we woke up with positive, negative, or neutral thoughts, emotions, and sensations. And in my experience of uh, meeting Balance View over 10 years ago, I'm so grateful for the gift of being able to live everyday life, each moment in complete stability and, um, and not just stability, also cheer and happiness, regardless of what I think and feel and emote and, and all the circumstances that are going on for me. And, uh, you know, being a human being, obviously, we wake up and we have all kinds of thoughts and emotions. And I know that my aim before meeting Balanced View was to wake up and always have the, you know, like um, Mary Poppins kind of <laughs> thoughts and emotions. Like, oh, I love life. My parents are the best. I live in the best country in the universe. And I'm the best person. And I'm always happy to see everyone. But often, uh, the way I woke up was like, uh, you know, like a sense of what's wrong with me and the world and what do I do today. My practice before Balance View was a lot about changing these perceptions, changing my thoughts, emotions, and sensations, what we call data streams. Because I thought that by changing them, you know, the negative to positive or trying to avoid those negative thoughts by distracting myself kind of immediately upon waking or whenever the negative state arose, um, then I'll be happier and more stable and more able to connect in the way that I wanted to connect. And that led to a lot of exhaustion, basically, and a lot, a lot of self-focus where I was constantly like, you know, it's almost like constant paranoia where, we're, oh, am I thinking the right thing? Can they see it? Can they see it? You know, like constantly thinking, uh, what do I think? What do others uh, think about me? Is it correct? Is it incorrect? Proper, not proper? And self-focus, basically, even without wanting, because that's what I educated myself to do. Use my intelligence, the choice of using my intelligence in a way that is focused on the content of the mind. In Balance View, we open up, we have the opportunity to open up our intelligence completely, to shake up all these old, old ideas of what our intelligence actually means, you know, and, and what is our capacity as human beings. So <clears throat> the introduction to open intelligence is very direct and simple, and I loved it from the beginning that when I met Balance View in, in India, that immediately the first thing I, I received the direct introduction to the nature of mind. I wasn't told that after one million lifetimes I would maybe get there and it would be nice if I'll behave okay. Uh, but from the very first moment I get the introduction, direct introduction to the nature of mind, of intelligence. So the way to do it, and we can all do it together, is just to stop thinking for a moment. I'm checking on you. <laughs> <laughs> and if we stop thinking for a moment, try it. What remains? There's a sense of alertness and cognizance, the power to know. This is open intelligence. Our intelligence is always open and vast, regardless of what appears within it, like clear blue sky you know, <laughs> or other colors of sky. It's uh, infinite and inexhaustible. It's a dignified way to recognize our power rather than feeling that we are flawed, needing to be fixed, something about our thoughts, emotions, body, perception, um, relationships, always constantly is not good enough, you know. Maybe we'll reach there if we'll fix just this, that, and the other thing. When we stop thinking for a moment, there's just a vastness of mind, vastness of intelligence, and we can recognize it, recognize it whether we think or not think. So the practice is not to, from now on, you know, like 12.01 on a Sunday, stop thinking for the rest of your life, because only then you'll enjoy the fruits of open intelligence. It's just by relaxing for short moments many times, the shortcut 
to this instinctive recognition of open intelligence, the shortcut rather than I'll effort more and more and more and more, I'll fix my thoughts so they'll be more sublime and then I'll be able to relax. Rather just relax right now, whether you have the most miserable morning or the Mary Poppins morning or whatever is your morning today. See the choice, the most important choice in every moment. I love that simplicity, this simplicity that it's really about how do I choose to relate to my experience, to my data streams. Is it a dirty enemy spam or actually the beneficial potency of open intelligence, inseparable from that? For me, it freed up quite quickly and obviously gradually as I gained confidence, so much space to just be, okay, that's what I think. That's my gift of data streams. It's not the best one, you know, if I could choose out of a drop-down menu or, or a store of data streams, I would probably choose more rosy one and peachy ones. But that's my case, so what do I do with that? Will I focus on ooh, how, how wrong I am or can I just relax for short moments many times? And for me, very quickly it resolved this morning depression syndrome that I had since I was a child. Very quickly. Because I started to see, like, I was really excited the first time that I, after being introduced, I, I woke up with this sense of, oh, again, a day. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, let's try a short moment. Let's really try and, and practice what, what's been so generously given. And when I took this important choice, most important choice to just recognize open intelligence rather than tell the continuous story that I've told myself again and again, about why I'm this and that and the other thing. I was like, whoa, freedom in immediacy of perception. That's kind of cool. No one told me about it. There's relaxation in the midst of feeling shitty. Wow, that's amazing. Inseparable from this feeling of sadness or anxiety, there's just inseparable open intelligence, stability and clarity. That's what I want. So it was so good, you know, the first short moment of that, that I just allowed myself not to analyze and get lost in the story of a victim with the wrong data. I was like, ah, oh, nice one. I want to have it again and again and again. And that's how the short moments became more and more continuous in my experience. And nowadays, if you ask me, how did I wake up in the morning? As open intelligence. <laughs> You know, I can tell you all kinds of things. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> still a bit ill and I miss my wife and I miss her hugging and, you know, it's a sweet, you know, but my day is not ruined because of how I woke up in the morning. It's not what guides my actions and how I want to be in this world. So that's amazing, really, to be free in the midst of all data streams, not just positive ones. Because I was so addictive to chasing after positive data streams that I thought that my freedom is only in Rishikesh, in India. And as soon as I book a ticket back to the West, I lost my freedom. So I had to go back again. And only in the special retreat place with the special people. But when I go to the city, it's lost completely. Or I'm back to work. You know, all of these limitations that are self-imposed, basically, on our own freedom, own capacity to relax and be powerful in the world. In these short moments of spontaneous, what you can say, ultimate meditation, then you, again, the shortcut and the immediate result each time. Each time rather than going in circles around it and hoping to reach a special state somewhere in 2025. Right here and now. Whether you get it or not get it, you can just relax exactly as you are, and that's it. You know, and what, what happens from this immediate recognition is that um, it just, the light of open intelligence just grows brighter and brighter, and that's my experience. So the focus is no longer on what is my package of data streams, which are anyway forever changing. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low, sometimes it's just like neutral. I definitely don't want to depend on these waves of instability, ever-changing descriptions. But inseparable from that, there's a solid basis of complete relaxation and rest, natural rest, 
the birthright of every human being, our ability to naturally rest exactly as we are, perfect as we are, not the damaged things that we thought we are, and, you know, with the hope and fear to be fixed and, and all of that. That's just misery. It's continuous misery. Even if you have the best day of your life, with the best data streams, it's misery because we really think, okay, now it will last forever. You know, the falling in love or the wedding day or the best sex ever. I hope everyone is above 18 or whatever is that. <clears throat> 16. <laughs> anyway, you know, getting the, the recognition and being loved by everyone. I mean, these are all sweet, but where do we place all of our focus and energy? And this is, again, the coming back to the most important choice. And sometimes with decision-making, I know it so well, and that's why I smiled when you ask your question. Sometimes we just don't know. And it's not the right time to take a decision, so you're deciding to not know. And it's filled with, filled with ease and relaxation, and I love it so much. I had times where I was, like, so relaxed in the midst of, like, decision. You know, sometimes even big ones, not just, like, should I wear my blue jeans or the gray ones? Like proper, you know, life choices and stuff. And I was so relaxed and I was almost concerned. Wait, I'm too relaxed. So I, I wrote to my trainer and said, I'm too relaxed about this one. And, you know, to receive the confirmation that it's fine. And it's actually okay to live in complete relaxation. And from there, there is just panoramic seeing of all the options and the right time to when, to when to take the move that will be of greatest benefit. Brilliant, you know, and we just know. And that's how I like to take decisions these days, rather than, the, mm -hmm. will I be happy after that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> will, I have, will I not have any negative data after that? You know, that was the thing. If I take the best decision, then I'll for sure be happy for the rest of my life. And just the best descriptions forever will bloom in my mind. <laughs> so you see the hope and fear around decision-making is completely ridiculous and outshone in a short moment of open intelligence. Because you know that you'll take the decision and you'll think, well, that was the best decision. And after a moment, mm -hmm -hmm, I should have taken the other one. So <laughs> to be dependent again on these ever-changing descriptions, it's just a, a tight box of descriptions that doesn't allow us to flourish with great confidence and ability. So great, good for you. <laughs> you are relaxed and you'll just know. And the four mainstays of balance view are completely available to remind us how bright our mind is, our intelligence, and our capacity to make the right move and the, in the right time, time, place, and circumstance, to always be responsive rather than a machine of responses. You know, when this person looks at me like that, I should tell them that so they can know that I'm this and this and that, you know, and we become so accustomed to a set of behaviors that is so limited. When we relax, we allow the, the greatness of each one of us to completely be obvious in short moments many times. And not just in ourselves, you know, it's not like a self-practice. It can start like that for sure, you know. I wanted to be free of my stuff. <laughs> I wanted to be confident. I wanted to be stable. But very quickly we get to see that when this power of instinctive recognition is released, then we start to see it in everyone else as well. People are no longer like objects in a space that we need to dodge or embrace. It's actually we see what unites us all in great benefit, great cheer, unity, peace, all of that, all the things that I so aspired started to become alive in the simplicity of a short moment. 